Okay, once again, everybody, good morning and welcome to the salary board for the uh, for Center County. It's 1001. We're going to start we are going to start with public comment for any items that are not appearing on today's salary board agenda. Is there uh, are there are there any public comment at this time? Okay, hearing no public comment, we will accept public comment as each item is under consideration. Is there a motion to approve the uh, salary board minutes uh, for June 8th? Next. I'll second that. I'll uh, give that to Commissioner uh, Dersham. It was uh, very close, but uh, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Is, is there any further discussion on the, on the minutes? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay, all right, moving into our first item uh, in action on personnel, we will turn it over to Administrator Gray. Morning, thanks very much. Um, this next item involves our 2021 budget. And uh, just for some context, uh, you all re will recall that when we were preparing and working on the 2021 budget, there still was some remaining uncertainty about where we would uh, land at the end of 2020 due to COVID-19 and what our revenue picture might look like for 2021. And given that uncertainty at that point in time, uh, no general salary increase was included in the 2021 county budget. Um, we're six months through the year and uh, based on some uh, additional clarity around what those revenues look like and our expenditures to date, and also with the ability to make some adjustments uh, within our compensation line, uh, we are proposing this morning a budget neutral 2% salary increase in the estimated amount of $481,843.93, effective retro to pay period one, which is December 20th of 2020, for all non-elected and non-union employees who are still currently employed as of July 1st, 2021. And again, I would emphasize that this is budget neutral. This would uh, in, include a uh, reallocation within our compensation line uh, to be able to accomplish this 2% across the board uh, increase for non-elected and uh, non-union employees. Corey Troutman, our uh, finance uh, director, is also here with me this morning, and he might want to provide some additional comment, or uh, Commissioner Pipe, you might want to uh, make some comments first. No, I, I would say if, if, if Corey could go, and then I think each of the commissioners would, would most likely okay. comment. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Margaret, uh, commissioners. Um, just wanted to walk through, we did the calculations, we did some estimated impact analysis. As Margaret mentioned, the amount uh, is a little bit under $482,000 on an annualized basis. So for 2021, what that means, because um, the, the actual determined contribution is gonna come in under what was budgeted, that this will be uh, budget neutral. So it'll be a reallocation of what had previously been budgeted to the retirement uh, payments back into salaries, as well as the related costs associated with that as employer taxes, et cetera. Um, so this would be uh, budget neutral for 2021, just reclassifying some expenditures. Uh, the annualized impact would be the 481 uh, going forward that we'd have to consider in future years. Um, some of that would be offset by grant reimbursements um, going forward as well. So with that, I'll open it up if there's any questions. Okay, thank you, Corey. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. And we can loop back if there's any questions or comments on this, but uh, one of the things that uh, we were doing, just generally speaking, when we, were, when we were crafting our 2021 budget is we were very, as, as Margaret and Corey has, has mentioned, uh, we're very concerned about what the revenue picture would look like. Also, there was still a high level of uncertainty about what any federal or state revenue might look like. And the fact that we've gotten um, a much rosier picture in terms of at the state level, uh, we are, there are about $3 billion over uh, their revenue picture. In addition, at the federal level, we've obviously received the American Rescue Plan funds. Uh, and again, the market did uh, surprisingly and finished a great 
2020 in, in a really great way that allowed our retirement, uh, the amount that we need to budget every year and put into our retirement fund uh, decrease from budgeted from the anticipated budgeted picture. So all, and then also it just was all, it was all green light. So what that means for us is that we're able to then go backwards and provide um, a, uh, a, a cost of living increase for uh, the category of employees that we talked about uh, in, on the agenda here. So this is just a recognition of the really the great job that our county employees did throughout uh, 2020, 2021, as we go into uh, this year, we're almost halfway done it. Uh, but just really, uh, uh, we, we do know that a, a lot of uh, employees were, uh, were, were curious about no increase and in what we we're gonna do about this. And I think this is a recognition that we have, we have a better financial picture. We wanted to make sure that we were conservative in this approach. And so um, as employees, uh, learn about this news. We want to also say a, a huge thank you to them and all the work that they've they've done uh, over the last year. So uh, I'll stop there. I know Commissioner Higgins, Commissioner Dersham will also have some comments. Uh, Controller Moser, as this is a salary board item agenda, may have some comments as well. So I'll turn it over to Commissioner Higgins. Thanks, Mike. You you already did cover quite a bit of it. We're in a drastically different financial picture than we were last fall. Um, we're able to. Um, have this um, increase be basically budget neutral. Um, county staff worked very hard during extremely uh, trying times. Um, and we want to recognize uh, what they've done over the past uh, 15, 16 months. Uh, unfortunately in the fall, <clears throat> based on realistic projections, that was gonna be difficult to do. Uh, I, I do wanna also stress that uh, um, no elected official at the county level will be receiving additional uh, salary increases uh, due to this action. It's, it's uh, for the overwhelming majority of county employees, but not the elected officials uh, and not the uh, union members. Um, so I want to thank uh, finance, uh, Margaret Gray and, and her team um, for uh, helping pilot us through the situation and uh, now we're able to uh, recognize county employees and even uh, give them a retroactive, at least somewhat retroactive bonus. Thanks, I'll pass it on to Steve. Thanks, Mark. Uh, well, it's actually pretty clear that uh, we survived a very, very tumultuous year. It was almost like navigating a minefield last year financially. We just did not know what our impacts were from an income or from a, uh, uh, and expenses. And so I want to thank, I want to join my fellow commissioners and thank our employees for bearing in there with us and uh, keep keeping, uh, keeping Center County not only going, but I think uh, going very successfully. And I think we've been a model for, for trying to work remotely at the same time, keeping services intact. So I want to thank everybody in our organization for being patient and I know there was some consternation about uh, not receiving a, a raise last year, but given the uh, uncertainty that we were uh, experiencing, I think it was prudent at the time. And I see as we uh, navigate through this year and we see the capability of re, you know, returning those dollars, I just want to thank our, again, our employees again for being with us and uh, working through this as we uh, navigated. So it looks like not only 2020, uh, was a successful year for us financially, but I think uh, 2021 will even uh, more so be. So as we move forward, thank you for being patient and thank you for uh, all the considerations. And I know there, again, there was some consternation in there, but uh, I think we have the opportunity to uh, to bring everybody back up to where they really should have been in a, in a, in a quote unquote normal year. And we want to thank them for uh, for that, uh, that, that patient. So, and, and thank you, Margaret, and, and all the finance team and the controllers organization for uh, making sure that uh, we, you know, we kept our finger on the pulse of the finances as well. So thank you everybody. And uh, we move ahead. Be well. And we'll offer if, <clears throat> if uh, controller Moser wanted to make any comments prior to us uh, taking any action, we, we'd uh, turn it forward to you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, I don't think there's anything uh, uh, new to say to it, but uh, you know, I just want to thank all of the uh, Center County employees and uh, the commissioner's office, Margaret, uh, Corey, uh, working through um, you know some of the savings we had from uh, uh, from the moves we made the retirement board. 
uh, to allow this to happen. But, you know, um, again, there was uncertainty last year, but I'm glad it's able to happen. I'm glad the commissioner spearheaded it. And uh, thank you again to um, all of our employees. Okay, thank you all. Uh, what we'll, we'll do is we'll offer the opportunity for any comments or any clarification on this. If there is none, we can look for a motion, but just wanted to offer the ability for anybody to ask any questions if we need any clarity on anything. So are there any questions? Okay, we're hearing none. Uh, maybe just uh, from a, uh, uh, you know, from an employee standpoint, when would folks uh, be seeing this in their paychecks? What what pay period could, would would, he, would we be expecting this on? Kristen, would you be able to give the exact pay period date? Um, so I'm looking at the schedule. Let me see here. We were the way the agenda item is written. We have to wait until at least July first to see who is still employed as of that date. Um, the, the fall the pay date following that, I believe, is. July 11th, um, but we may, just because we have to do a lot of calculations, I would have to say probably the last pay period of July would most likely be the re when they'd see at least the retro payment, we could do the increase possibly before that. I, I honestly, I'd have to talk with Jason because it's a lot of entry um, into the system for those retro payments and we have to calculate or work with Corey and Ed to calculate the new steps to be entered into the system as well. So, I mean, it's a lot of coordinating of between the three offices to get it done. So by the end of July, we could say that the, the retro, um, the 2% uh, will take effect on uh, July 1st and the retro would be in, in a paycheck uh, by the end of July. Is that fair to say? I would say so, Jason, do you agree? That we'd be able to get it done by then, do you think? Yeah, I think that's fair. That gives us, well, really the month of July, about a month and a half at this point now. I mean, I think we can re we can move the scales definitely by July 1st with the 2%. It's just the calculation of those retros, I think, is the, is the bulkiest, most work-intensive piece of it for our offices. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, all right, that was the only question I had. Any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, at this time we would look for a motion. Motion to approve the 2% salary increase effective pay period one of 2021. Go ahead, Jason. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on this? <laughs> okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion has carried. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to uh, be joined now by our sheriff as a voting member of the salary board. Uh, good morning, sheriff. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, how are you guys today? Good. Absolutely. Yes. To, good, good. How are you? I'm here to present. Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to take off after this meeting and take my kids to Del Grosso. So I'm uh, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> right now. Okay. So it's like a nice day. Oh, this will, be a, this will be a long winded discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm glad somehow I got moved to the front of the salary board, so I'm very appreciative of that. So I'm here to ask for the approval of uh, Tyler Hoover. He just recently got out of the military as of two and a half weeks ago now. Um, from um, He was stationed in Hawaii. He was with the 25th Infantry Division. And he has done some uh, online work as a, a, uh, uh, in college for a psychology um, degree. So he's coming here to see if he likes it for uh, maybe just for the summer. We'll see he might go back to school. He's still undecided, but we brought him on for the summer. And, um, so we'll see how he, how he works out and what, what his plans for the future are. But I'm just asking the board to, a motion to approve Tyler Hoover. Um, retro, as of Monday, he started. Um, but just bring him into the base pay. Okay, there, we have a motion on the floor. Would there be a second? Second. Second. Seconded uh, by uh, Controller Moser. Uh, any final discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none. Enjoy Del Grosso's, okay, uh, Sheriff? All those in favor say aye. Have fun. I appreciate aye. it. Have, have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye. You bet. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye now. Okay, we're going to move into our uh, correctional facility. We have two items there. We have our warden with us, and we'd like to turn it over to uh, Chris at this time. Good morning, warden. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm here to uh, have the board approve a appointed mental health counselor, Danielle Fox. Um, it's been a long time waiting since the COVID hit for this. Uh, this is a grant funded position. Uh, we elected Danielle Fox to come in to our correctional facility as our mental health counselor, uh, looking at an N12 step four at 1737. Um, the grant funded was at step five. However, we bring, we're going to bring her at step four, um, but this is grant funded for 21 and 22 year. Um, our second one today is approve of the Center County Correctional Facility Lieutenants to be paid overtime when working open correctional officers shift for shifts only after 40 hours worked in a week has been met effective retro June 6, 2021 for pay period 13 through January 1 of 2022. Um, salary. Um, right now, all hands on deck here at the correctional facility. Um, Deputy Irwin and myself have been picking up officer shifts as well. Um, the lieutenants, we feel, need to be paid some overtime while they're taking up shifts as well. Just giving our officers a relief right now because they're getting exhausted with working all this overtime. So just asking the board for approval. Okay. Thank you, Warden. Uh, any questions on either of these, uh, these items? No, I just want to say thank you to the warden and uh, and all the staff and the lieutenant for stepping up and uh, really uh, showing again what we're all made of. It's uh, these are difficult times, and I, you know, if you would have had a playbook for this, I don't think it would have included uh, any of the scenarios that we've seen in the last year. But you folks have really stepped up and continue to step up, and I'm I'm pleased to uh, support you and your and your efforts. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Chris. You and your <clears throat> you and your team, the corrections officers, done a great job here over the last 15, 16 months. Uh, happy to help you out, and th thanks for you and even the deputy wardens covering the occasional shift. Warden, you're uh, going above and beyond. It's always we're, we've been proud of your leadership at the correctional facility. It speaks volumes. Uh, your lieutenants as well, and your COs doing the, the OT that they need to. Um, uh, we do have uh, hires on today for for uh, in our board uh, meetings today. Can you give us maybe just an update on how are we seeing additional applications coming in? Um, we, we, we're doing this pilot program with the incentive uh, sign-on bonuses and some retention there. Can you give us maybe, are you seeing additional folks coming through there? Is, is there, uh, can you give us maybe an update? We're having a, I wouldn't say a steady flow. Uh, we get a couple in and we don't get a couple in. Um, a lot of people we schedule for uh, interviews and they don't show up for the interviews. But um, right now, I think there's five that we have on the agenda for today, which is a plus. Um, and I know um, July 6th, we're already looking at that date. I think we have three scheduled for that date. So that's getting us up to our full time. Um, and then we'll see, we'll go from there. Then all we have is part time positions available at that time. So uh, hopefully we can still get that steady flow in it that we are right now. Um, I'm st we're still looking at, at, the, at the far end if the incentive plan is, is actually a benefit right now. I mean, we are getting more applicants in it on, on, a, on a flow here and there. Um, so I, I think by July, we'll, we'll know definitely how we're working out with the incentive program. Okay, thank you, Ward. Okay. Uh, any let's let's uh, look for a motion, then we can take any further questions on these two items. Would there be a motion for the two items for the correctional facility? Motion to approve the two correctional uh, facility items. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on these items? Questions, comments? Mike, I just wanted to point out for the board um, that for the lieutenant's overtime, just so we're all clear on that, that, that is an uh, budget impact per lieutenant uh, approximation for the year. So uh, just so we're aware that that's not total, that's per lieutenant. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Controller Moser. That is a good thing to be aware of and note. Thank you. Okay, any final discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion has carried. Thank you, Warden. Okay, uh, we do have one item here for emergency communications. This would be to consider the approval of the appointment of Dylan Rodiger, full-time public safety telecommunicator. Uh, we are looking for a motion to approve the appointment of Dylan. 
Motion so approved. Oh, second. <laughs> been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to turn things over to our directors of facilities management, Lee Schaefer, for the appointment of Lacey M. Bress. Good morning, Lee. Good morning, all. Thanks for having me today. Um, yeah, so today we are considering the approval of uh, Lacey Bruss as a custodial worker one. Uh, Lacey uh, is, in fact, a, a recent high school graduate, but she did work her way through, uh, through school. Um, she is coming on board with us, leaving a position that, uh, that uh, as, as uh, was paying a little bit more, um, but she's interested in coming on board with us. Uh, we've had some turnover with these positions. Um, but I feel we're still in a really good position uh, since we have moved away from the uh, contracted uh, staff, you know, with the direct management of, of this. Um, but uh, yeah, coming up at the five step, uh, again, it, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's that significant. But um, again, when you look at the, the market, people are starting to come back into the workforce and things of that nature and uh, uh, interview really well. Um, so uh, again, we'd, we'd like to bring her on board and give her that opportunity. Okay, thank you, Lee. Is there any, are there any questions on this item? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to uh, approve? No, motion to approve the appointment of Lacey Bruss. Okay. All right, it's moved and seconded, and this would be at the motion would be at the higher step, Commissioner? Yes. Okay, all right, great. All right, the motion has been uh, made and seconded appropriately. Any final discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay, thank you, Lee. Thank you. All right, for our human service items, we have a few today and we will turn it over to Natalie Corman for discussion on these items. Hi, Natalie, good morning. Good morning. So uh, the first agenda item is to reclassify the Director of Adult Services uh, the position is currently graded at a 54. Um, uh, the recommendation today is to move it to 56, which is in line with our middle uh, 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 human services department sizes. Uh, and with the growth, obviously, that we have seen in adult services, uh, that department is moving into that middle uh, ground of human services. And so we wanted to reflect the job description uh, to increase that salary grade. So that is what uh, letter A is. So the second letter, uh, the second item is then to uh, address a salary increase for the director, Faith Ryan. Um, again, as we all know, that department is going through an immense amount of growth that started last summer uh, and is continuing with the um, federal funding, uh, state funding that we are receiving for that department and the growth of staffing it. Um, and so from going from a department of three, including the director to a department that could reach 18, uh, if positions are fully filled. Um, I, um, we wanted to work through and acknowledge uh, Faith's work with it and then also moving forward uh, the salary that she would receive. So um, the recommendation is such to move her um, to um, 56 uh, H8 um, and then going back to May 23rd. And the reason for that um, is primarily because Faith has been at all these agenda, at all salary board meetings due to all the changes in her department. And I finally have been able to get on uh, and I'm covering for her today uh, to be able to present this um, to the salary board for consideration. Before I move into the other caseworkers, do we just wanna have any questions for those two items? Cause they're kind of separate from the rest. Yeah, let's let's maybe just have a quick discussion. Yeah. I think, and I think to uh, to expand and echo what you're saying, Natalie is, um, you know, Faith's budget uh, has essentially or the amount of funding, not just not just with the emergency uh, rental assistance program or ERAP, but with uh, the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's it, it's it's great. It's great that we have the funds, but the the case management is really the hard mm -hmm. uh, where the rubber meets the road, and that that's taking a lot of effort. And then we're we're additionally we're you know quadrupling the staff that she's supervising as well. And so this is a recognition of the, uh, for the next, unfortunately, several months, if not years, uh, there will be a lot of case, additional case management because of the effects of the pandemic from a housing perspective um, and every other uh, case management direct services. So this is a recognition of that. And um, the, the, the offices uh, changed drastically from where, <laughs> as, as the pre preceding director, you would know uh, better than anybody how it's changed over the last several months. So uh, I, I would just to highlight this, uh, my support for this, but if, if there's any other questions or comments before we go on to three and four, we, uh, we can do that before we move forward. 
No, I think it's pretty clear that uh, space uh, job responsibilities have significantly changed, and her uh, her compensation should change with it because uh, it went from a fairly manageable small department to one that uh, is very much in a, in a state of flux, and where she is actually uh, responsible for now uh, over ten million dollars worth of uh, worth of grant funds to, to distribute. So she needs the staff to uh, accomplish that. So I certainly support this move. Yeah, it sounds fine. Okay. So then uh, the two other items are reflective of the case management positions that the board has um, added on to adult services. And so uh, the first person uh, that we would bring on board, uh, she goes by Maggie Bishop. Uh, we'd be asking to bring her in at step three of a caseworker one position. Um, uh, so Ms. Bishop actually comes to us. Uh, she was a... Um, probation officer? Uh, no, she actually uh, was Central Susquehanna Opportunities. Uh, she worked with at-risk youth, uh, job training, employment opportunities. She understands services in Center County um, and has been a longtime advocate, especially working with those with autism. So case management has been in her wheelhouse. So we wanted to recognize bringing her in at step three for her uh, experience for that. Um, and then uh, for Bernice Cates, uh, it's also a similar, it's coming in at the step three um, Mark, um, Ms. Cates actually comes to us. I think she's the one, if I'm correct, that comes to us from New York. She actually was a uh, probation officer in New York City, uh, has also worked in children and youth in Pennsylvania. So again, um, understands case management, understands linking people with resources, understands people in crisis, especially for the positions that we're talking about when it's about housing assistance. Uh, so we wanted to recognize uh, bringing uh, Bernice in at step three as well. Okay, thank you, Natalie. And we should uh, mention these these positions are both grant funded through the uh, ERAP. So, yes. Okay. All right. All right. We have uh, we would look for a motion to approve items one through four on the adult services items. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on this? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay, thank you, Natalie. And uh, would you, would you uh, uh, be willing to cover the CYS item as well? So this one is just sort of for me. So yeah. they have been trying to fill this department clerk three position. It has not been an easy position for them to fill. Uh, they finally found a candidate in, in Polly that they want to support. And so therefore bringing Polly in again at the step three. Um, while I don't know Polly's experience, um, I know that, that it's been a struggle to kind of find a candidate in this position. And so in hopes of of securing her previous employment uh, by bringing her in at the step three was the opportunity to do so. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Is there a motion to approve the appointment of Polly Donahay? Motion to approve the appointment of Polly Donahay at the higher step. Would there be a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay, thank you very much, Natalie. Thank you. Okay, for our courts, we have several items here. We have uh, four. The first one is for court administration. Uh, we have the approval of the rate of Shelly Thompson uh, at <laughs> a uh, on-call occasional tip staff in the court administration office. Uh, we also have a magisterial district justice uh, in the Philsburg office would be looking to appoint Shelby Paul uh, Podlitsky, Podlitsky, there we go. Um, and this is uh, for a uh, higher rate, and this would be at 1461. Uh, for the Belfont MDJ office, Brianna Packer, and this would be uh, uh, also an additional higher step. And then lastly, for uh, Judge Lockman's office in State College, we're looking for Anna Colin Colonini, Nina, Colonina, there we go, Colonina. And this also would be for a higher uh, rate. And so we have these four items for the courts. Would there be a motion to approve the court items one through four? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Controller Moser, seconded by Commissioner Gershom. Any final discussion on these items? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion has carried, okay. 
Uh, lastly, for the salary board agenda, we have one for the elections office. I can speak to this briefly. Uh, this is to consider the approval for uh, a retroactive payment to, to Jolene Kitko. Uh, and this would be to adjust her pay from the first date we brought on temporary election workers in, in for the 2020 general election to the work that she did for the primary election this year. Uh, Jolene was at a, a floater rate and upon reviewing the same or the work that she was doing for the election, um, we had the temporary election workers that were grant funded at 1511. And so this would essentially allow us to just uh, uh, bring bring her up to that rate, provide her for a retro payment. Uh, I think it's in hindsight, the, the fair and, and right thing to do. We do have uh, 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 grant funds still available to do this left over. So it figures it's the best way to, again, uh, rectify the situation. So. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but again, the total would be $1,228.85. Okay, hearing no questions there, would there be a motion to approve? Motion to approve the retroactive payment to Jolene Kitko, and it's, it's always great working with her. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on this item? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay. We are, before we adjourn, it's, uh, we look to see if there's any other items that we would need to consider on the salary board before we look to adjourn. Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. It has been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning do so by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. We are adjourned. We can stop the recording now for this meeting and we'll uh, begin recording again for the commission.